Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather, and it's all about the Pacific Northwest and this powerful jet stream that will now take that moisture and then nail the interior of Idaho, the Tetons, the Wasatch, and then eventually the central and northern mountains of Colorado. I want to take you up to Oregon. So if you're familiar with the, the movie the, the, uh, the Shining, this is the Timberline Lodge from that, and you can see it is buried. Uh, Timberline was closed yesterday. It was closed today because they've been inundated by snow. Um, the, the ski area, of course, which is just right over there on Mount Hood, right behind it, it's, it's all been closed. And I've got another three feet of snow in my forecast for Timberline, uh, for Bachelor, all the way through the 7th. So this is a, this is a, a big uh, snow cycle for that area. I want to take you into Jackson Hole here. And you can see just kind of a serene look. They're reporting four to five inches of new snow, but this is just the tip of the iceberg for Jackson Hole. I've got feet of snow coming to Jackson Hole. Let me take you down to Snowbird. You can see the view there. Looks like some lowering of the clouds, maybe a few snow showers, but your real snow comes tonight into tomorrow. And tomorrow's going to be a huge storm, skiing day, powder day thereafter. We could do a couple of feet tomorrow out of this this next push easily. So again, that's Snowbird. And let me show you what's going on here. This is just a powerful storm track pointed directly at the west coast, northern California, Shasta, Oregon, Washington. So all the energy and moisture is just getting slammed into the Pacific Northwest, all these ripples of energy. And then it's getting basically blown into the interior through the Tetons and eventually the Wasatch tonight in Colorado, the central and northern mountains. So that's the next place where all this moisture is going to be moving. Um, and there's there's more energy behind that. So all that will dump into this trough and basically get uh, pushed into the interior. So we've got a pretty stormy uh, period ahead here for the west. And it will be followed by high pressure as well down the road, which I'll show you. Let me take a look at the uh, the future position of this on the, uh, the GFS. Um, this is the American model. You can see the light snows there moving through the interior. Picks up an intensity tonight. So this is tonight into, here's Wednesday morning. You've got moderate to heavy snow over the Tetons, the Wasatch, central and northern mountains of Colorado. Snow back through Idaho and Oregon continuing. And look at that next storm system aimed at the Pacific Northwest moves in. This is Thursday morning. Heavy snow back into the, uh, the, the uh, Cascades, the high volcanoes, B.C., Idaho, Schweitzer, Northwest Montana and continuing to slam the Tetons. All right, let me take you into Friday morning. Next storm hits the West Coast, moves into the interior with another shot of snow. And then that one drops down through the Wasatch, the Tetons, and back into the central and northern mountains of Colorado right here. This is Saturday morning. Now that is the last of this storm cycle. All that moves away, then high pressure begins to move in. And it's going to move in for a few days across the Intermountain West. All right, let's take a look at my uh, forecast snow totals, and we'll do it in two time periods here. Basically from today all the way through the 8th, you've got 1 to 2 feet across basically the central and northern mountains of Colorado with the maximum amounts, the bullseye being in the northern mountains of Colorado through the 8th. Um, working on a few feet there in the Wasatch, I think that's entirely possible. We'll get a couple of feet between tonight and tomorrow, and we'll probably add to that down the road. Up in Jackson Hole in the Tetons, really no change from what I was thinking yesterday. Three to four feet possible up there, very high in the Tetons. Um, and then you've got a couple of feet through Big Sky, Discovery, Whitefish, a couple of feet up there in Schweitzer, Brundage, Sun Valley could get a foot. And then the big totals way up there in the Pacific Northwest, I mean they're high, 30, 40, 50, 60 inches of snow with snow being blown into the interior of BC up into Fernie and Revelstoke as well. So that's sort of phase one. Here's the other phase, and you'll notice a very distinct change. This is after that high pressure moves in. All of the totals basically drop off through the lower 48, except up in northern, uh, up in the northern tier states, and that's it. So after this, and let, let me go back, after these numbers fall, then we go to high pressure for a lot of uh, the West. All right, let's look at a couple of snow plumes. Here's Jackson Hole, and again, you're just getting started. The big numbers are coming five, six into seven, and you'll probably end up with uh, three or four feet. That's Jackson Hole. Here's Cameron Pass in Colorado. Like I was saying, I think the bullseye for Colorado is in the northern mountains, um, and, and you're looking at some big accumulations between the four, five, six, seventh 
time period, another little bit there between seven and eight, and you'll end up at about two to three feet. Um, also, you're going to get a lot of wind with this, probably two or three different surges of wind scraping the high peaks of Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado throughout this period as this powerful jet roars through. All right, enjoy all that powder up there. Stay safe. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Take care.